Welcome back guys, I'm MTG Joe. Today we're going to be playing some black white aristocrats. For those of you who aren't familiar with the term aristocrats, it's basically a deck archetype uh, where you sack your own creatures for value. Um, the payoff card for us killing our creatures is Cruel Celebrant. So whenever Cruel Celebrant or another creature or Planeswalker you control dies, each opponent loses one life and we gain a life. So we have a lot of cheap creatures that can be killed and generate value and then we can ping our opponent. So we have Hunt and Witness and a bunch of afterlife threats in uh, Imperious Oligarch and Tithe Taker as well as Gutter Bones and Reassembling Skeleton that can be reoccurred over and over again. Um, we're doing the split. I want to try out both of them. Uh, this is the first time taking the deck for a spin. Uh, Gutter Bones usually works out better in red based decks where you have like Judith or something to get the ping damage for Spectacle whereas Reassembling Skeleton doesn't have the restriction of dealing damage. So I want to try out both of them. I'm playing two Priests of the Forgotten Gods. It's very good when you can untap with it and have the spare creatures. However, a lot of times it just is a card that we cast on turn two that immediately dies. And its stats on its own aren't very good. You're not usually attacking in with it. So I want to try out two. I might just opt to go with some more like reactive cards instead. Uh, Midnight Reaper is our card draw engine. Our creatures are dying, so it'll draw us cards. We have Plague Crafter, which in our deck is a pseudo sack outlet. We can sack our creatures. We have a lot of spare ones, and it forces the opponent to sack like either if they're going uh, aggro with like one big creature, or uh, sorry, uh, Voltron, uh, or like a Planeswalker, or just force him to discard a card. So it's good to catch like a Teferi, a Nicol Bolas, something like that. Uh, Gideon Blackblade is a very, very difficult threat for uh, control to beat. Uh, it's a creature, can give our other creatures a whole whack of abilities, Vigilance, Life Link, and Destructible, and in a pinch can also exile non-land permanents. Seraph is part of our top end, uh, 4 mana, 4, 3, that's effectively 3 bodies. Uh, can give it Vigilance, Death Touch, really good stats on this one here. Soren is a very, very impressive uh, four mana planeswalker so it gives all our creatures lifelink which is really relevant with so many creatures dying um, we'll generally be able to then be able to take attacks and still force our opponent but really the the abilities on it are relevant you can target other p opponents or planeswalkers so you could just keep doing ping damage or what i like is we can start reoccurring so if it's late game our cruel celebrants keep dying we could bring them back with soren uh, our top end consists of two cards that i wanted to try out uh, both can have rationale as to why they'd be good in the deck. I want to see which one kind of overperforms. So uh, Oketra basically rewards us for playing creatures. We're playing a lot of creatures. She generates more tokens, which would then die, cro uh, trigger Cruel Celebrant, profit. Or we have God Eternal Bantu, which we could sack our creatures and draw a bunch of cards. So both are really relevant. Um, so I want to try them out. It might be right to have both of them in the deck, but uh, I want to give them a test out. And then we have Liliana at the top end. Uh, so again, rewards us for having creatures die. Uh, we can create tokens, force the opponent to sack creatures, or just have them uh, pretty much win the game. Um, sideboard is Duress for the Control matchup. Dreadhorde Invasion is something I want to try out against Control. Uh, just a never-ending stream of 1-1s. One We're gaining a lot of life, so it's not that big of an issue. Moment of Cravings versus the more aggressive decks. Dispark versus like Nicol Bolas, Teferi decks. B big spells, even hitting like a Wilderness Reclamation. Formations versus uh, like board wipe decks. Darials versus Control. Um, another way to pick apart their hands. If the game goes long, which we could usually grind out the long game, it could start dealing damage as well. Mortifies is catch-all removal. And uh, some Angraths, which is another creature that could create tokens. And more importantly, give our creatures Menace, which might, with we could swarm the board, allow some, for some more profitable attacks. So we'll take it for a spin. See how it goes in normal play first, and then we can take it to ranked. So as we get started, if you're new to the channel, uh, I play everything from tier 1 decks to jank, everything in between. I'm a sucker for multi-card combos. Uh, we pretty much will play what the viewers like. I always have some favorites, uh, but if you have any suggestions, drop it below. 
And if you can, uh, always ask if uh, subscribe is a free and easy way to show your support. It goes a long way to helping the channel. And enough pandering, let's get to playing some magic. So opponent will be on the play. Yeah, I can keep this hand. Most of the time our deck will go long. It's a little weaker to Chain Whirler. If this is control, then it's good. Drawing Bantu is actually pretty good too. Because if we flood out, so if we go draw basically more than five to six lands, Bantu could just sack our lands and draw us more action. Interesting. So we'll play Tithe Taker here. Opponent might have had a negate, thinking that we are control. Dropping the site. So this actually turns them off. Uh, okay, so they use cast down on our main phase. That's fine. We still get the token. So we'll attack in there, play out a second Tithe Taker, and play the Godless Shrine. The gods are really good uh, against control. If they sweep it, we just get it back. Okay, so that seems like a board wipe. Ooh. God Eternal Kefnet. So here I'm just going to play out the Seraph. No attacks. This will hold them back as well. We could start attacking in with Seraph with uh, Vigilance, and we can always try to force a block out of them. This is where the Death Touch becomes relevant. I haven't seen the Esper list play Kefnet that much. So they play Mortify here. The Menace on Bantu could be relevant. Let's see what the opponent plays here. Hopefully not a Thought Erasure. So they attack in here, no blocks. Gives us an opportunity to smash in with the spirits. So here I'm going to play Bontu. I'm going to sack four. I'm going to do two lands just because we have so many lands. Jeez, just drew that many more lands. So we have Memorial to Folly. We can get back uh, our Seraph. Play out Gutter Bones, Tithe Taker, and Memorial next turn. Pretty good turn. Okay, so they do that. Let's put it on top. Uh, so here, let's play out a second Tithe Taker. It's kind of nuts, we've drawn so many lines. Ugin the Inevitable. Pretty solid for them. Gives them card draw as well. Okay, so Midnight Reaper is good for us. I think at this point...
We ignore it again and just try to go for the face. Them blocking the gutter bones is good for us. I'm surprised I didn't block the tide taker. Just bring that back to hand. And we draw Bantu again, which is good. So we can cast the gutter bones, play out a land, sack both. Draw a bunch of cards. Opponent gets Ashiok. We can deal with our graveyard, but not really concerned at this point. I do need to be mindful of the gutter bones now. So here... Probably sack three or four lands. Narsa just turns off everything right now. So this looks like Esper Super Friends. Should probably play the Immortal Sun actually. I aspire for more. Seraph's really good for us. So we just want to keep forcing damage into the opponent. Let's resolve all. It's unfortunate we actually take the damage from Midnight Reaper, but we don't get the card draw. So here we're at 6 mana, so they can take the Seraph. They could take on to I think Bond two is a better play here. Narset really turned off those plans. Opponent will thought erasure us here. They need a board wipe. Let's slow this down. They tuck Bantu is probably the right play. You need to take a time out. They make a token. Truth lies beyond vision. I have just the trick for this. Ketra would be good. Oh, that's nasty. That is nasty. I lost my appetite. Like they have to thought erasure us here. It would make sense. That's a very greedy line by them. Bring this back now. Since they have the Cryo Carnaria. I'm gonna opt to not play it uh, because we know they have the Cry. Ugin can destroy the Seraph. Let's 
So they use the cast down instead. So they'll just use Cryocarnarium here. I'm pretty dead. We needed a Cruel Celebrant. They've hit quite a few, actually. Two. Wonder if they have Kaya. Take the Oligarch. Serves as two bodies. We'll see what we draw, but we're pretty much dead this game. Hurry! This is in a lot of value to try to get behind. It was actually this Narset that probably did us in the worst. Secrets manifest before you. That's fine. Narset against our decks or our Ashiok because we get all these recursive threats. against many foes like you. Hone your prowess. I guess Soren's not bad. But even this coming to the top, Soren just pings him for one. To be fair, I don't even know if they exiled Soren. Okay. Opponent's got us there. We drew off so, a lot of lines. Okay, in this matchup, obviously Duress, Dreadhorde could be good, Angrath would be good, the Spark. Uh, what do we want to take out? Gutterbones seems bad. Priest seems like it's never going to survive. Oligarchs out. I like the top end. Midnight Reaper is good. Skeleton probably is also the cut. We've seen Ashiok. We've seen a, a number of cards. Probably go like that. More Planeswalker heavy. This is probably the oddity that we see this many Planeswalkers, like for the Elder spell. Sideboarding. All right, let's see what they come out with. Let's play first. Heard you need lands to play magic. This hand's good. If we could get Gideon down, then we're in a really good spot. Perfect. Tithe Taker should also deal with any sort of counter spells. So here they'll either have to play something on their turn to deal with the Tithe Taker. Gateway Plaza. Let me lead the charge into darkness. Uh let's Your give it leave the darkness. Life Link. I try to get this up high enough that when they drop a planeswalker we can just exile it. Seems very slow as a tempo play. This is the matchup where Gideon should shine. I gotta pick up a couple of these. I play black white super friends in modern. So like the black white Gideon deck, so I have still have to get around. I haven't played modern in a while, but 
Got to pick up a couple Kayas, uh, Gideon, maybe Ashiok with all the Phoenix going around. It's a fun deck. Basically just make a bunch of tokens, play Lingering Souls, and then have a bunch of removal. Unmoored Ego, go ahead. So ready, I play one more copy. You spend three mana to take a card out of my library, but you're facing down a 4-4. Four, four. Drawing a land this turn would be good. Okay, another Hunted Witness. Let's give it life link. So we feel bad. This is like really overextending into a Cryo Carnarium, but take our chance. As a reminder, do not play Unmoored Ego against a random non-combo deck. You play against to get like Expansion, Wilderness Reclamation, or Nexus of Fate. Or against Esper, you can take the Fairy. But to take a, a two of Planeswalker that's already on the field where it's a heavy creature deck. Like we showed nothing but first game that we had creatures. We had a couple Planeswalkers. So opponents probably revising their sideboard. And that's where Gideon just kind of shines. Looking to to make an um, what's with these no landers? We're playing twenty three lions. Uh, it's really good, but do we want to? Probably not. So I'm gonna lead on witness, and I'm gonna hold the duress. Probably till turn three. Get no lands and all lands. So the reason we're doing the duress now is because we want to make sure Soren gets down, and we can do that. But, okay, so opponent missed a land drop, which is really good. So we'll duress them now. Okay, so Dovin's veto. You force him to burn a counter spell there. So, we did kind of screw up that. We could have gained the life, but I don't think the life gain matters against this deck. Just want to see to force them. So now we'll just start pinging up. Yeah, an opponent concedes. This is a lot better showing for the deck. Cool. Let's crack some packs. Wild card, another Ral. Overall, pretty solid. Gotta play me some Ral combo later. Um, let's do one more, just uh, best of one. Just want a quick one. We're going to say we're going to play a quick one. We're going to end up against Esper probably again. If you haven't checked it out as well, we played uh, earlier today the Simic Fog deck. It's a budget deck. So it's pretty cheap rare card wise. Like The lands are the rare lands, but other than that, it only plays three rares. So you basically just play uh, Ashiok and Psychic Corrosion to mill your opponents out. And then you keep recycling fog effects with Tamiyo. Okay, so... It's a bit slow, but we'll try it out. So we got the lands. Oh, this is terrifying. This is 
very scary. So when we played no removal on the main board, this is when uh, things went bad. So I'm going to block the spell breaker. So what we're going to do is we're going to block the spell breaker. And then play out Soren, get back the Spellbreaker. We're basically just trying to stay alive. I have come for vengeance and blood. Accept the darkness within. So they have seven power, we gain three. See what they play out. Fireblade artist. So that's five. I think this is the only way we kind of stay alive. Most likely have a pump spell. Gotta try this deck out too. Yeah, that deck's quick. Definitely need removal against that one. Go one more since that only took four minutes. to Lorenzo, let's see if he is on Ral. This curve is really good. Let's play the gutter bones here. If this looks spell based, then we'll play out the tithe taker. Most likely is. With opts. Just forces them to spend their spells on their turn to tap out. Uh, next turn, I'm gonna Priest and Hunted Witness. Fine, you blow a spell there. Uh, is Priest still right, or do we Tithe Taker? It's likely the Ral combo. If it's Drake's, then we should have played out the Priest, but even then, they can't kill us in a turn. Want to draw another land here? That would be best, so we can double spell next turn. So, them having two Lava Coils. Spell Pierce. Ah. So next turn we can Priest. So attack, then play Priest. Sorry, attack, 
play Cruel Celebrant Priest and then play Oligarch. Opponent's doing a lot of nothing. Like they're gonna have a big Drake. If they are Drakes. This hand probably would have been a lot better with Sahili. Perfect. So play that out now before combat. And turn. So we have at least five damage on the board in terms of creatures. This actually deals four damage, two from the creatures dying, two from Cruel Celebrant. The opponent is literally just drawing cards and doing absolutely nothing else. You gotta play Sahili. So we're going to activate this. Do the two, go into full control mode. Why doesn't it let us... Oh, only during your turn. I always make that air. So we'll attack in for everything here. Here I'm just going to be mana efficient. Yeah, but opponent sees what's happening. So, opponent interacted with our board, but didn't really interact. But we will take the win. Let's crack one more pack. Actually, drafts are coming up soon, tomorrow morning, so we'll save the coins for the draft. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. It goes a long way to supporting the channel. Have a great one.